Hi, I'm Henry Alonzo Myers, television writer and father of two. How do we know each other? We were lucky enough to work together on The Magicians for the last five years. Sarah has been my boss and my writing partner and my uh, show running partner and otherwise just a fantastic friend and someone to lean on. (laughs) Yeah, someone who wants unlimited texts about bread from you. Right. I mean, it's a little bit torturous because I can't eat gluten, but it also, I don't know, I like looking at food I can't eat. I'm wearing a t-shirt that says gluten is my co-pilot. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I think you're kind of a mean friend, but... (laughs) Here's what I appreciate that you respond to passion. You have never made me feel weird about loving bread, even though it's not something you can eat. No, I like it when people like things. So here's the idea. I sometimes do Q&As on Instagram stories where people just send me their questions about writing. A lot of those questions are about how to break into the business, but the truth is right now the business is in a very unknown place. But I thought what I could do... Um, that might be helpful is to have a little conversation about how we do the process of writing. That part, we don't really have an excuse. (laughs) I've always thought that like your first job as a writer before you get any job is to figure out how you as a writer write. 20 plus years ago, I was a script reader. I wrote this thing called Coverage, which is like a book report. I would read scripts uh, and I would write these book reports and I would do two a day, every day, five days a week, 10 a week, three to 500 a year. Thing I learned was a schedule. I woke up at eight and I wrote from nine to noon every day. And then I read my scripts and wrote my coverage in the afternoon. And I separated those two. But like the thing that I learned was how I had to make myself do it. It was about being regular, whether I want to do it or not. And I feel like that's the first thing you as a writer have to figure out is what is your technique? How do you do it? How do you jump onto the page and make yourself write? Because no one's going to teach you that. So you're saying have a schedule that works for you, basically. Yes. And you have to stick to it. The other thing that I do that I discovered is learning to write outlines, which is something that I didn't always do, but have embraced deeply. Once I have an outline that I like, I write a draft and I don't reread it until I'm finished. And I call that like my garbage draft or my vomit draft or my rough, rough, rough draft. Um, there's a reason I'm abusive about it is because the worse I think it is, the less bad my final read of it is. And at Mm -hmm. least at that point, I have a script to rewrite. I kind of came to writing as a reader and I realized that I'm much better at revising something once I have it. The longest one I've ever done for a television show was, uh, and no one ever saw this draft. Me was about 90 plus pages, which is like a feature. I wrote a feature basically. I've done that. My first like 10 supernatural scripts were like a hundred pages each. And then I marveled at how incredibly easy it was to just cut 18 shitty pages without even trying. That's it. It makes it very easy to cut. Usually what I find is that it's not quite as bad as I thought it was because I just Mm -hmm. thought it was terrible. Um, And I just start cutting stuff and see where I land. As I've done this job longer, my drafts kind of land a bit closer. You develop from doing this a lot. This is the 10,000 hours thing and instinct for when a scene is purposeless or for when you're trying something. Like you're like, oh, I have an idea for a joke or I have an idea for a character thing in the scene and I'm trying it. And as I read it, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I tried it and it didn't work. The hard part is to realize when you tried it, it didn't work and you should take another swing at it. That's something you have to develop a taste for yourself. Do you start at the beginning and write straight through to the end for your garbage draft? Do I do. And I know a lot of people who jump around and write the fun stuff if they need I do that. <laughs> which I totally respect. I don't know. It's never worked for me. I kind of worship at the altar of emotional tracking. The way that I track stories is I look through it and I say, how am I, I am the people in this story. How do I feel now? And then how do I feel after that? And then how do I feel after that? And then when I start moving those things around too much, I get a little confused. And so I'm, I'm mostly just trying to track the journey that people go through emotionally, characters go through emotionally from scene to scene to scene. So doing it linearly helps me, even if I do a bad version of it. Someone else used the phrase scaffolding Mm -hmm. scene. You know what I mean? Like where you just do a quick pass on it just to have something. So sometimes I will look at a scaffolding scene and I'll have to deepen it or I'll I'll look at a scene and I'll decide that this emotional thing was wrong. But doing it in order is, for me, is like a way that I help kind of feel the journey of it. Right. Especially, I guess, if you have an outline, the outline tracks the plot. Emotion frequently, you discover it's not what you thought it was when you were just doing the ones and zeros. 100%. Yeah. And separating the plot and the emotion stuff is kind of helpful for me as well. Like doing the outline is really helpful because I try 
not to think about plot as I'm writing it because mm -hmm. I, I want to, I, I got to assume that all those pieces are in order. And that's a thing. I think you develop a muscle for that. I think you start to see when that works and it doesn't work and you can, you get a better sense of what you have to move around to make things work. But the outline, I always say that saves me like three or four drafts. For me, it's like the shittiest part of, like the, the emotional tracking is the fun part, the yeah. stuff, but it's yeah. like, figuring out if it's like you professor plum in the library with the sledgehammer or whatever <laughs> right, right i would rather just do that first and have it be solid so that i don't have to i can just sort of fix little things not have to figure like invent the mechanics that, make, that the totally thing. makes sense so people are trying to be writers right now are <laughs> self isolating or even self quarantining, they are experiencing bad times. You know, you and I have worked side by side for five plus years. I have seen you sit down and do your job brilliantly when you're having an extra shitty life moment. Um, and <laughs> This is a bit of a tricky question to ask professional writers because like I always say, well, the mortgage waits for no one. <laughs> like right. even if I don't do my best work that day, I have to work. I think that makes it easier. Writing for a living makes it easier to write when your life is falling apart because it's your job. But you can't you can't make excuses. I I mean, if I'm going to be judgmental, I <laughs> think you're you have more diligence about this than I do. Part of my technique is I mean, when I look at the if I did a a graph for how my scripts go, it take the longest time to write the first act. And then the last two or three acts, I write usually in one day. And usually that's just because I'm trying to get into a groove. Right. And I'm very forgiving about that at the beginning. And I get increasingly anxious as I go along, you know, if I'm not making progress. I got a, a wonderful uh, gift from my wife once, not an actual gift, but a, a idea gift, which was that I don't remember what show this was, uh, but I was having a panic attack about being able to finish my draft and this feeling like I just didn't know how long it would take. I don't know how, if I'm ever going to get this thing finished. Mm -hmm. And she turned to me and said, you know, you do this every time, right? And I, and I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, every time. Every time you do this, you say, uh -huh. I don't know if I can get it done. And in a weird way, that, that was the most freeing thing because I had this sudden like out-of-body experience where I looked at it and I said, oh, this is my psychology. Like I'm creating a panic in myself mm -hmm. to get this thing done. And after that, I be actually began to remove the panic part. I developed a patience for myself because I realized that I was putting myself on this same emotional journey every time and that the suffering part of it was not necessary. I right. had to just trust that I would get it there. But you know, the early days are hard. And, and I think that the trick is to remember, especially if you're easily distractible, what's the Bilbo Baggins in Lord of the Rings say, has a thing that Frodo quotes about how going on a journey is, is a tricky business. You just have to put one foot in front of the other. You just have to do that for 10 minutes. If you can give yourself 10 mm. minutes to write bad stuff frequently, the psychology of writing, kind of getting into it. And part of that's from allowing myself to write bad stuff. You yeah. have to let it suck. And if you yeah. accept the idea that you're sitting down to write today for the next 10 minutes or see how long it goes, and you're not expecting that it actually has to be good, you just expect that it has to be done, then future you can figure out what piece of furniture to make out of the wood, right? I mean, you'll mm -hmm. find amazing things that you would never think you'd find. You'd, you'll fix the things that don't really work. You, you know, you'll, you'll find the things that make it cool. Um, I've rarely found those on the first pass. I just have to have the strength to get through it. Uh, and also you, you end up believing in your outline because you get to the end and you read it and you're like, oh, this actually, it's coherent. Like, you know, I can, <laughs> it makes sense. I try this technique with my son who, you know, is in middle school and is writing essays and, and he's like, I can't do it. I don't feel like doing it. And I say like, look, and I never feel like doing it, <laughs> but I know <laughs> if I just make myself do it for a little while and get through the discomfort, eventually the flow will come. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, you know, you can, you know, I, I'm a big believer in like, take a moment for inspiration. I have like various movie moments and TV moments that I'll watch to inspire myself. Sometimes watching movie trailers helps me or watching scenes from TV shows that I find inspiring. <laughs> this, was, this won't be a popular answer, but I watch the dragon in Game of Thrones burning uh, King's Landing. I find that scene very inspiring. <laughs> You're like, now I remember why I'm a writer. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hopefully there's something in here that's going to help somebody who's like, I'm stuck. And then they'll realize maybe they just expect it to be amazing. 
Right. That, I mean, that, that is the biggest thing is giving yourself permission to not have, like, don't, you're not writing a finished draft. You can write a finished draft in a week or three weeks or tomorrow, but you don't have to do that today. Giving yourself that permission, I think was the, one of the most important things to realize because no one, no one writes great things first off. No. The secret of so many scenes that I've written that later people are like, wow, the dialogue was really witty. It's like, well, it was 10 times longer. (laughs) First, I cut everything that was an F or a D. Then I cut all the C material. Then I cut everything that wasn't an A+. (laughs) (laughs) Only the best lines. I cut the rest of them. I keep a like a a cut file of all the things that I cut out of a script and put in. And frequently the cut file is longer than the script itself. Because sometimes there's something in there. When I delete, it's fucking gone. Never (laughs) return. If it wants to come back, it has to pretend it's something new. You know what it is? It's because I'm I'm a little bit of a, you can tell from my books behind me, I'm a little bit of a hoarder. (laughs) <laughs> so the psychology is I'm not really throwing it away. <laughs> I still have it here if mm-hmm. I need it, but I never need it. But you're it helps. Like, I didn't just write two pages. I wrote two pages and the 25 pages in the slush pile. Right. It helps me because I think it allows me to cut things that I might not feel the freedom to cut because I would be afraid mm-hmm. of losing them. But you know, they're there. You're giving us the goal. Thank you. Sure. Um, happy to do it. Plenty for the writers who need a little gentle Henry Alonzo Myers kick in the booty. Um, so thank you for that. You're welcome. And I'm, I'm here for anyone who needs bread help as well. <laughs>